Hey, welcome back guys. Does everybody remember this guitar? I bet you do. Uh, so I know it's been a long haul with this one, but the lacquer is finally dry. It takes about a month with that nitrocellulose lacquer to get it dry enough to the point where you're, it's recommended that you start polishing. You can probably push it a little bit, but I didn't. So I've got my nice, my nice gloss lacquer job on there, but it's not, uh, it's not as nice as it could be. It needs a little bit of polishing. So in this video, I know you guys have seen me do polishing work before. This is gonna be pretty much no different. Uh, it's time to sand this back nice and smooth and polish it up. And then from there, we can start on the assembly finally. I'm excited to see how this thing, uh, how this thing actually looks when it's done. I'm probably gonna need to make a little bit of hardware for it because the original stuff just isn't gonna look right. But we'll cross that bridge shortly because we'll be coming to it shortly. So. Let me bring you in closer here and we will do the polishing on this guy and then, uh, and then we can move on from there. So in order to polish this, I have to start by sanding it flat because when you spray, you get orange peel and your clear coat and stuff. And we need to make sure that that's all flattened out first. So I'm going in here with a thousand grit right now. I'm, I'm uh, sorry, I'm sanding it by hand. I'm trying not to put much pressure right on the edges, the corners there of the guitar because Paint doesn't build up on corners like it does everywhere else, so you really need to be careful about that and don't sand too much right along the edges. Those areas don't need that much polishing anyway. I'm starting off here with a thousand grit, um, and as you can probably see, it's it's nice and smooth now with a thousand grit, and I'll have to go up from there after. But that tends to be a pretty good starting place, unless you've got, uh, as you'll see later or soon when I move to the back, um, more texture then you can go with a, a stronger grit, but a thousand is a good place to start. So I'm doing the front here also by hand with a thousand grit here to start out and get all that orange peel flattened out. Make sure that I've got the whole thing nice and level. You'll see here in a second, I'll show you uh, after I wipe the dust off because you can't tell with that on there. All that orange peel is gone out of the area that I've sanded and then over here in the glossy area I haven't sanded yet. Right now I'm taking the gloss off the back of the neck uh, with I think a thousand and then I'll, I'll move up to 1500 after but uh, I'm not going to polish that because my hand sticks to glossy finishes. The back of the guitar is pretty rough. Um, the grain filling didn't go quite as well as I'd hoped there. So for this I'm using 600 and an orbital sander. Uh, there's lots of clear on there but you got to be careful. Don't stay in one place too long when you're sanding. This is just my way of trying to get this done a little quicker. So when I wipe it off here, you'll be able to see, uh, as I show it to you, that there are still a bunch of low spots. The shiny spots are the ones that are lower. The high spots get sanded back and go dull. Uh, and you want to make sure you're sanding until you've sanded the high stuff all the way back to where that low stuff is. Uh, and that way you can make sure that it's all flat. So when there are no shiny spots left, chances are you've pretty much got it all. I'm just finishing it up here um, and smoothing it out a bit more with some thousand grit by hand. And then I'll show it to you again here. It's looking much better. Nice and flat. So now I'm moving up to 1500. You uh, you want to get as high as you can basically. So I, I do the whole thing in 1500. Then I come back in 3000. And then in 5000. That's what I'm working with right now. And, uh, and 5000 grit is quite smooth. Uh, it's basically a satin finish when you've got something sanded to 5000 grit maybe even uh, verging on semi-gloss so you get the opportunity to see that here uh, you can kinda tell just by looking at it but I do that all by hand on the front and on the edges and then on the back I go in uh, with the orbital sander at 1500, 3000 and then 5000 grit uh, so when I show you the back here you can already see it's kind of like a reflection in there that's without any polishing that's just straight sanded to 5000 now it's time to move on, on to the polishing I, I'm being lazy here and using the uh, the polisher on the edges just to kind of show you that it can be done. It looks pretty good. You'll see it in a second here. Nice gloss. Uh, works better with a bigger surface, but you can also do this by hand. This right here isn't sped up at all. All the other stuff that was sped up was uh, was four times normal speed. This is by hand at just the speed that I do it at. Um, and you got to give it more pressure when you're doing it by hand, but 
it's entirely possible to do it that way just with a cotton or sorry um, well cotton's an option a lint-free cloth and that's just just a couple seconds of polishing in that area here you can see the fronts all sanded up to 5000 and just for this purpose of demonstration because I know a lot of you don't have polishers I'm going to kind of show you again not sped it up at all here um, uh, you know how how you can polish out an area relatively quickly you're just pushing nice and hard small circles and uh, and then straight across to to kind of burn that polish right into the sanded area now obviously if you don't sand to as high a grid if you're only going up to say 1200 or 2500 or something like that uh, it's going to take longer to polish out you're going to have bigger scratches to polish out so it's going to be more difficult to do it by hand but it doesn't take much and then I'll just kind of cut here to uh, to me showing it to you the polished area in the corner there that I did by hand versus the rest of the guitar which hasn't been polished yet on the front so that's enough of uh, of the slow method I'm just gonna go in and do it with the polisher now you do have to be very careful not to keep the polisher in one place for too long and don't push too hard it's kinda of medium pressure this is particularly the case with this nitrocellulose lacquer if you're using a polyurethane you can push a little harder you can you can sit a little longer because it's more durable but this lacquer you'll burn right through it if you're not careful so be careful I think it's looking pretty good needs another pass or two but uh, not bad so let's move on to the back for now the back's a nice flat surface and what I do here is I put way too much polish on because I have a bunch of residual polish on the uh, the foam of the polisher and this is my second pass and I try and make up for it uh, and kind of overdo it in the other direction by using very very little but still you don't need a ton of polish it shouldn't be spraying your shirt and stuff it really doesn't hurt anything if, it, if you do do that but still it's not really necessary here I'm just quickly polishing up the headstock by hand and uh, looks pretty good didn't have to use any of the pneumatic tools on that so I'm pretty pleased with it all right guys so that's about it for the polishing process um, that's how you do it sand it back flat get it up to a nice high grit and then come back and polish it there are of course different polishing systems I've done a video on a few of them comparing them uh, but the Norton liquid ice is one of my favorites I've got all the tape off of here now all the cavities and everything and uh, and the fretboard and whatnot are all unmasked. So next up comes the assembly. I'm going to have to make a little bit of hardware for this thing for the uh, pickup cavities, or sorry, not the pickup cavities, the cavities in the back, rather the control cavities, uh, because the stuff that came with the kit simply won't look good, and I don't really want to paint the plastic. If you would like to see how to paint plastic parts properly, I've got a video on that as well. I think that's enough of me plugging my other videos. Anyway, I'm going to make that stuff. Uh, I'm not going to film it because I'm going to use equipment that you probably don't have access to. But yeah, I'll get that done. And then when we come back, we'll start assembling this guy. I got to get the, the electronics in here, get the strings on, and hopefully it'll play. <laughs> I'm sure it'll play. Hopefully it'll play well. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.